Hey guys, Dustin here. Sorry about the pilot attire. I'm actually in a classroom about to teach a class a little bit about AI. But before I do, today's session is about analytics. We brought in Dashbot, an analytic company, to give some insight on what to do with your analytics as you start to grow your chat team. If you have any other questions about Dashbot or other analytic platforms, feel free to reach out to me at dust at botcopy.com. A quick announcement before we get started, Botcopy 2.0 is right around the corner, so stay tuned. A handful of new features and capabilities for Botcopy are around the corner. We look forward to showing you those, and until then, enjoy today. All right, ciao. Kind of love to hear from you on your thoughts on the space and from kind of the analytics side. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, so nice to meet everybody. Um, you know, my name's Henry. Just a quick intro on my end. Um, I've been at Dashbot for oh, I think over three years now. It's been quite a while, but I mainly sit on this sales side. Uh, but I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of different companies, ranging from startups all the way to enterprises that are building chatbots for various use cases, from customer service to sales, um, to lead generation, um, anything you could really think of um, for the chapter space. And so I think in the past few months, ever since the start of COVID, obviously there's been quite a lot of layoffs uh, for a lot of companies and a lot of them still need to provide, you know, really good customer service in order to retain their customer loyalty. And a lot of these companies have been turning to more chat-based solutions, so AI-based solutions, and customer service channels where they don't require, um, you know, 24 seven agents to be handling those requests and those calls. So there's been a lot of interest in this space and we do see this growing interest in other companies that I started working with um, during this time, you know, they start off with very, very small teams, built out an MVP for their chatbot with like maybe let's say like three people at max, maybe at most five people on the team. And then yeah. within the course of like six months a year, uh, they, they actually expanded those teams almost tenfold. And within those teams, there are a dedicated group of people that are known as conversational designers and spend a lot of time in dashboard looking at the analytics. And one of the reasons why conversation, specifically conversational analytics is so important is that it's one of the only ways you can consistently optimize your chatbot, especially after launch. And so one of the best ways to optimize is basically by reading into what the how your users are interacting with the bot learning from those different interactions and those conversations to try to improve and add new additional content, as well as improving the accuracy of your NLP engine. And then doing two things, these two things are really gonna buffer up, you know, the, the, the experience that your users will have in the chatbot, allowing you to really, you know, in, improve your conversions there or keep your customers happy in the case that you have a customer service use case. And so I think today, happy to had with some of my customers and then also giving you a quick tour of our platform to show you what are the most common types of workflows that our, our clients are using to actually solve their problems and also optimize their bot. Yeah, beautiful. And I know you've been in, at Dashbot for um, over, a little over three years, which is great. And we've seen just a huge growth in, in the NLP and in this space alone, like right now, dial or bot copy works primarily with dialogue flow. But as we expand to Rasa and Microsoft, we're we're excited to take on and help those clients using those platforms as well. Um, but there's there's also a lot of talk of NLG, which is kind of the, the next phase. I feel like it's that that's the great race right now is who can get to the generation side of things first. And mm -hmm. I, I think being in, in owning and having a big piece and stake in the analytic side gives you guys kind of an advantage of looking at that. But even right now, most teams doing it more on the manual side, like kind of really just trying to understand what's coming in. I mean, conversations are complicated. So it's, it, it's gonna take for, for a bit more data, A, and then just designers really kind of painting the, the canvas on how to, to have best practices move forward. But what's your, what are your thoughts on, I know that 
a lot of the feature sets and one of my favorite feature sets that I'd like to go in on Dashbot um, is your NLP optimization section that you guys, I think, released within this last year. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's an amazing tool, especially uh, like with the clusters and things that a lot of companies just face with like intense and training phrases overlapping. And that's a huge, even with our chatbot on our website, we, we run into that all the time. Yeah. But it's it's kind of a step in that direction of of generation. So, any thoughts on well, what's your opinion on generation? What do you think over the next? Where is where are these analytics going? And you know, right now, what do teams look at manually, and what can, do you think they can look forward to in the future? Yeah. So you know, generation. Um, you know, I I'd still say that you know we're still a little bit away from from you know deploying any type of nlg onto like a public facing platform um you know some of our engineers on our team we have a data scientist that has been testing um you know like some like has been testing some of our data with uh with ideas around natural language generation i believe um one one of the ones that are out there is called bert that he's been testing out and so there are some ideas around what we can do um, but you know, there's nothing concrete just yet. Um, I think this is the tricky part is do, is kind of creating natural like NLG that's catered to a specific industry and the way those users the you know the vocabulary that they use and the way they speak for that particular industry. And so again, we we are exploring options there, but. Um, nothing concrete within the near future just yet. Um, so again, as what we currently have in the platform is really just focused around understanding your own data based off of how your, your own users are interacting with the bot and then, yeah. and then collecting that data and trying to really optimize, um, your, ex your exact experience because every single data set that we collect is really unique to that, to that company and then your own users. Yeah, and one one thing that we look at, like there's a few analytic tools that we look at. Um, we we actually use Janus for live chat, and it provides a decent live chat transcript and to human handoff than to kind of automate that, which is which is nice because a lot of time when you insert a live agent, uh, you can lose those transcripts. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's nice to review kind of how you naturally answer as you know human to human, and then start training your bot off that. Mm -hmm. um, but but with you guys, I love the not handled section. Yeah, um, and it's usually one of the first things I, I tend to look at is you know what's breaking the most, and and what can we fix uh, relatively quickly. Um, mm -hmm. So do you think, is there an example that you can maybe demo on like, hey, here's where something wasn't handled. Yeah. Um, company went in, saw the saw this use case, maybe changed some copy around, and then all the, the next sure. customers were able to uh, have a little bit better of an experience. Exactly. Um, so just to speak on that not handled report. So the way the idea kind of birthed was around, um, you know, when you, when you launch your bot, right, you spend months of development time to build out the intents, build out the contact, a con a con um, in the content, and then try to, you know, try to guess every way that a user can possibly, you know, phrase a particular use case or a question that you have built into the bot. And typically on launch day, when you do go into production, um, oftentimes you'll quickly realize that it's almost impossible to capture every single way or to, to be able to kind of predict every single iteration or every single way someone can phrase a question. And that typically is what leads to your not handled intent or otherwise known as the default fall, fallback intent being triggered because you didn't, you failed to predict and create, you know, a training phrase for a particular way someone can ask a question. And so that's kind of the idea of the not handled. We are trying to surface every single use case and every single way someone can phrase a question that your NLP engine currently does not understand. And then from there, providing you the training phrases to then actually train and improve those intents going forward. And so what I can do here, let me share my screen and I can actually show you and give you a glimpse of what that not handled report looks like. Beautiful. Second here. Let me know when you all see the Dashbot dashboard here.
Can you all see the uh, dashboard dashboard? Yeah, I can see it now. Okay. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, so this is just a sample movie bot that I will be using to walk through some of the reports today. Um, for some context, this is our sample movie bot. So the use case here is for people to look for a movie, find local theaters, and then eventually purchase the movie ticket within within the bot experience. And so this bot is an example that's on Facebook. Um, just some quick context, we can actually integrate with any conversational interface. So even if you deploy on a website, a mobile app, um, even on WhatsApp, or if you even have experiences that are on Google Actions or on Alexa skills, we can integrate with any of those experiences and then be able to produce the reports that you're going to see today. And so, you know, Dustin already provides some context that you know one of the most important sections here are under the is under the NLP optimization tab, and the report that we were talking about is what we refer to as the not handled report. And so the way we generate this report is by ingesting every single copy of um, the messages um, that your bot receives and sends out. So again, every time it sends or receives a message we receive a copy of that JSON payload that comes into the Dashbot backend. And then within that payload, we get information like the utterance from the user, as well as the intent that Dialogflow has tagged that utterance with. That's the reason we're able to produce this not handled report. So essentially, these are this is reporting on all the times that your not handled report is being hit. So the first part of this view here is just, again, the frequency of your not handled intent. Um, first off, how many times it's been hit? Second, by how many users have actually sent it in? And then the green line showed what it, the green line actually shows you what percentage of your incoming message volume contains that not handled intent. So it's like giving you an overall failure rate of your NLP engine um, over time. So as you're improving your NLP engine, you're improving your intent and adding in new use cases, you want to see this green line trending down to the right. And to help you with that optimization process, we've actually rolled up all of the different user utterances that have been tagged with the not handled intent. And so a great example here is for my movie bot, this is potentially a new use case I can be adding in. For example, if there's an age restriction for that particular movie that they're looking for. Um, another example here is a training phrase that I should have had for my help intent, which is I need your help. Um, and so this is an, an additional training phrase I can add under the help intent. So next time someone says this exact utterance, they get the proper, the appropriate response. And then finally, another example is for top box office movie. And so you can see three different variations asking for top box office movie for this week, for this month, or right now. This is a new use case I can add in. But as you can see here, any change in a single word or potentially a typo will leave will lead to a separate line item here, and so when you do scale to a certain volume, this report can get a little bit messy to look at, which is why we've added an addition of phrase clusters. And what the phrase clusters is is our own machine learning algorithm that allows us to cluster together messages based on similarity. And so that same example for the top box office movie, I can now open up this bucket and then identify five different ways that someone has asked for top box office movie and be able to easily export out all of these different training phrases. So then you can dump this into dialogue flow and then create a box office movie intent. And so again, this idea here is to try to really save you time um, when it comes to the optimization process by presenting you these buckets so you don't have to manually sort through you know, the, the different occurrences yourself. A really great tool once you start to scale your chatbot and you're getting a ton of volume. So now you can just come through, uh, look through this report, and then comb through to find the buckets that look interesting. For example, buckets that contain a potential new use case or a bucket where you know you already have an intent built out, uh, but you actually find a bunch of new training phrases for that particular intent that you can use to improve it going forward. And is there a way currently using Dashbot? Like, what's the next step? So we see these clusters or we see the messages if they're a little bit lower volume. We identify, okay, here's, here's a group of training phrases that should probably be attached to intent we already have. Mm -hmm. what, what's the next step? Do they go to Dialogflow and search for that intent and just add those, like, manually? Or is there a way here within the NLP optimization to upload that to Dialogflow as well? 
Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. So currently the majority of our users are going through that manual process. So they're going to do, they're going to, they're going to export these training phrases out. It pulls it out as a text file and dialogue flow when you're creating new intents or you're adding in training phrases has the ability to essentially import a text file um, to add in those additional training phrases. So that's one of the few ways that our users are using this report, um, especially if they're on an NLP engine other than Dialogflow. So if they're using something like Lex or Luis, they're essentially exporting these training phrases out. And they're sometimes putting it through another platform, such as like a Google Sheets, where they reorganize these phrases um, based off the clusters before finally uploading it into the NLP engine. Um, that's typically more the case uh, when it's a very large team and they needs to pass through a number of us, like a series of eyes before they get the approval to actually make the change to the NLP model. Now, the next step here, which we've been working on recently, um, is essentially trying to close that feedback loop. So again, um, most of our users have to switch between dialogue flow, potentially a Google Sheets in the center, and then coming to Dashbot. And the end goal here for us is to be able to close that feedback loop so you can actually perform all three of those steps right within the Dashbot platform. And so one of the newer features that we have is what we call our assessments. It's actually only currently available for dialogue flow. So it's good that you guys are building your bots on that NLP engine. But the idea here is to actually ingest your entire NLP model. And so when you come into the assessments tool and come into create assessment, you have the ability to either log in directly to your dialogue flow account. I'll show you right here. So we can import your model from dialogue flow and there's an option to export that model. And then I believe it's a zip file and you can actually connect it here or you have the option to actually log in directly to your Dialogflow account by hitting that connect button. And we will actually import your, your NLP model directly into Dashbot. So once, once you've actually run the assessment, it takes about 30 minutes to half an hour to process your NLP model. We can actually help you make suggestions on how to improve the model. And I'll show you an example here. Um, let's see here, let me make sure there's data in this example. One second. Sorry. So, okay, there we go. Ten recommendations. So, so the idea here for the assessments really are is to create essentially an intelligent task list um, that helps you identify areas where your model can be improved. And so these different suggestions range from anywhere we can detect training phrases have been overlapped. Um, if training, if there is a particular training phrase with an intent that's an outlier, or if you're actually sending data into Dashbot to create, to add training phrase additions. And so this is now pulling from that phrase cluster and not handle report that I was just showing you, taking that data and allowing you to actually create new intents or add in additional training phrases to current intents directly within this assessments view right here. And so I actually need to find a bot with some more data and I'm actually gonna switch a bot here um, one second so I can actually show you what the, what the workflow for the assessments look like. Sorry about this. It looks like a few new assessments were added when some of these are actually all missing some data here. Okay, here we go. So an example for, let's say, once you run the model, we're able to make a suggestion in this case for where we've detected training phrases have been overlapped. And so as an example here, you can see that the phrase is, I need help. And then the same training phrase belongs under two different intents. And we've been able to detect that, detect that uh, using the assessment. So again, the same training phrase, I need help, belongs under the request human as well as the track order intent. And so obviously once looking at this, um, you can easily detect that, you can easily understand that, that this I need help phrase shouldn't belong under the track order intent. So what you can able, what you're able to do now is you can actually choose the correct intent that it should belong to, which is the request human, and then be able to update your model directly from here. 
And then in the case that it is correct, for example, I need help is going to the request human, you can choose to skip this and then name a reason why you are skipping it, saying this is okay as is, so that you can actually, you know, you can clear this suggestion out um, so that you can move on to the next suggestion and start to clean these out. And again, the, the next section here is where we're identifying those training phrase additions. This is again using that same phrase cluster algorithm where we're finding a new utterance from the user and it looks like it's matching very closely to the cluster of training phrases of an existing intent. And so now we're helping you identify new variations of messages that should belong under intent where we've seen that those training phrases are matched very closely. And so now, um, different iterations such as I just want to talk to a human or I need to talk to a human, you can easily add these in as a, to the training phrase set for the request human intent. And again, you have the ability to add as well as the ability to skip through these. And then the next few sections are again, closely related with that not handled report that I just showed you. It's closing the essentially closing the feedback loop with the ability for you to create new intents so these are, again, new clusters that we found. If you identify a new use case that where you should create a new, brand new intent, such as I need to speak to a human being, um, you can click Add here. And this will actually show you the clusters um, of, the, of messages that we've already identified for this particular intent. And then if they all look like they belong for this intent, you can select them all. And then this will actually create that brand new intent for you with these current these three training phrases already being added in. Um, and then the final few uh, suggestions that we have here are around unused intents. And so um, sometimes when your NLP model becomes too complex, um, there's often a few intents that are never ever reached because again, it, the flow might be too complex or your users might not ever navigate to those particular intents. And so if there is a particular intent that is never hit, uh, we try to surface that for you here uh, so that you can actually clean up your NLP model um, based off of how your users and what your users are actually using. And so um, that's essentially the idea there. And then finally, the last one is the intents disabled. This is more of, um, like a notification in case that, uh, so Dialogflow has a concept where you can disable a particular intent. In the case that you accidentally disable an intent and you and where it shouldn't have been disabled, this is a, like kind of like a final check to make sure that all the disabled intents are the ones that should have been disabled. Um, otherwise, you it, you know it's just a reminder that you got you have to enable one of these intents so that your users can actually hit that and your conversation flow won't be broken. And so again, that's the, essentially the idea here. Once you do make the changes to your NLP model, you have the option to finish your review. And before you actually put it into production, if you're sending dashboard data, you actually have the ability to test the, uh, your new NLP model against your old data. And so the test format basically tells you, you know, was this, did this lower the amount of not handled intents? and or did it actually uh, perform worse and so you have the ability again to run this check make sure that it's actually improving the performance of your conversations uh, before you actually load this into dialogue flow and then send it off into production any questions here so far So I, I always like to use the analogy, especially for people who are just kind of getting into this and where this high level might be just a lot. But yeah. with with the analogy of hiring a new employee, mm -hmm. you know, let's, say, let's say it's this employee's first day and then you put them in, let's say it's at a retail store, which um, is, is kind of a difficult example given the time. but. Let's say that people are walking in um, as they traditionally did into a store and there's a help help desk and this is this person's first day and they don't know much, right? Mm -hmm. They know a few things, they know the basics, they've gone through like a briefing and everything, but they don't know much. And, and what separates that employee from, you know, being, you know, eventually being a really good employee is their ability to remember and then also when they don't know things to understand what they don't know, reach out to the resources um, to find the right answers and then get back to that client. 
Um, and and that's, the, that's the same thing you really want to do with these chatbots is uh, I'm a strong believer that the, some of the best chatbots I've seen are some of the stupidest, but that have a very compelling default response when they don't know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in kind of building from there. So even if these, th these intents are not handled, you can still write and design a very smooth response that says, you know, hey, Dustin, that's a great question. I'm, I'm not, I don't know the answer, but if you leave your email, I can get back to you as soon as possible with what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And that might be a very generic default. And you can start like placing defaults on as fallback intents within dialogue flow. If, if the bot recognizes that, okay, they're asking about, you know, this product line or pricing, you know, you can have context be saved around that and, and then they ask something that the bot doesn't recognize and you can say, well, this particular pricing or product question uh, is a little over my head. Uh, let me go grab someone from the pricing product team that might be a little bit help better for you. And, and moving kind of the bot's knowledge base and, and what it knows kind of forward in that direction, I found very, very helpful. And then looking at these kind of not handled situations and, and, and making it better. Now, it's, with us, we always look at a few different weights. It's not handled by, um, by how many times, like, and that's a pretty obvious one. The more it's not handled, usually put a little higher weight or priority on it. But then you also look at you know, the time it takes to develop. You know, some, of these, some of these not handled might require um, some heavy backend webhook, and a simpler, there might be a better way to serve things up. Um, or you can look at um, if it's if it's a not handled and typically it just requires a human touch. Like a lot of times, like pricing or purchasing, especially with like larger orders, will um, will require some kind of human, at least on the sales side, yeah. to, to help with that. Um, and even though that not handled could have happened a lot of times, like it's, it might be best just to say, okay, this is not handled. They should go directly to the sales team. While some of these other ones that might not have, have happened as much, but they're very repetitive and they can take us like 10 or 15 minutes to you know, sync up as intense within dialogue flow and kind of move forward. So it's not always best practice for us, at least we've seen, to just focus on the top thing that comes in. But to really come up with like uh, some ROI behind the company on, okay, this, this came in um, only once or twice, but it's so important, so easy to automate that it's going to save a significant amount of money if we tackle this one before something else. So mm -hmm. that, that's just my kind of insight and what I've seen on that. I do kind of want to open up to, we've got a handful of people who, who joined and missed kind of the, the beginning spiel, but was there any questions from any of the other uh, people we have here, no gym. I, I have I have a question regarding assessments. Yeah, yeah, good work, Ron. So typically, like when you talk about the complex, large agent, how many, how many intents are in there? Yeah, for a complex bot, I've seen up to 200 intents. And then the question is that you say that you, you found uh, conflicts. So the question is, let's say that you know one has I want help and the other one has I need help. Is that also a conflict? Is that you can you also recognize those types of as in uh, the learning, phrase. learning phrases that are close to each other? Yeah. So for this particular for this particular suggestion uh, for overlaps, we are just looking for identical phrase overlaps. Um, this again, this is looking for that exact phrase. Okay. And so it's not going to look for similar phrases because you can understand that sometimes when you do have a very complex NLP model, there may be phrases that are similar, but they actually do belong in, in two separate intents. And so then the idea here is we are only looking for exact phrases that have that, that belong in separate intents and service that for you. And you know we are always open to feedback. So if there is a use case where you know you do you do want to look for similar phrases that may overlap, 
Um, that's always something that we have we have the technology for and we can add in. Um, you know, it's just uh, we are just trying to collect. We are currently in the process of collecting customer stories that are using this tool um, to understand what is most helpful to them. And at this point here, um, we are just keeping it as the exact phrases that overlap. Right. So in, in your experience, when you have similar phrases, uh, how does like a dialogue flow handle that? Is it usually, you know, exact so, in, in finding the right intent? So, you know, like if a user sends in a message and, you know, like typically if it if it's the exact training phrase, if it maps exactly to that training phrase, it will pick that you know that exact intent you know i can't say i can't say too much on the exact algorithm for dialogue flow in terms of how they determine tagging for similar phrases um but at least on the optimization end on the data end with dashbot uh, we want to provide currently at least for now just the exact phrases um okay. yeah so that right. there's no guessing here but because we don't know what the exact algorithm for dialogue flow is okay so we, we've got a few different use cases in, in vertical specific here with, with Jim, it looks like Austin's here in Jeep, where I've seen they've got a, a growing demand for having the chatbot go across different departments. Um, and, and even in Jeep's use case where the chatbot is potentially going on you know, different departments at different companies. Mm -hmm. um, and, and these, it, it's funny because we're, we're experiencing the same thing at bot copy and I can speak a little um, more on that is, you know, we've got a chat bot that sits on the front of our website before people log in or create an account, which is more sales oriented. Mm -hmm. um, and then also the same one, but it sits in the support page within our portal. And, you know, obviously the support page within our portal, it's kind of geared up and starts with like, how can we help you with your current bot? And the sales is, you know, how can we get you to sign up for free? Mm -hmm. But we're using the same agent, and it gets it gets a little more complicated doing that. But Dialogflow is really pushing these mega agents and and the ability to combine knowledge bases. So I'm just curious on from your perspective, what you see in this, you know, best practice for companies who are considering rolling out, you know, one one bot for this department, this bot for this department. Um, yeah what's that kind of looking like from i guess from a product standpoint and, and more importantly just from just thinking out loud like what would be your because the information is a bit different but for personally i find the information from the marketing and support department extremely important for the sales team at bot copy so I like it all to be in the same place and for everybody to have a little bit of knowledge on what types of questions, like support questions people are asking because mm -hmm. typically it's, it's also a good, you know, approach, a way to approach sales, it's like understanding, okay, people are usually asking and, and want this. Mm -hmm. So let's lead with that value prop from, from the sales side. Now, that's more directly you know, how we look at bot copy and, and these are, these companies, they're yeah. here significantly bigger, but What's what's your opinion on how to how to handle that like migration to multiple departments? Yeah, yeah. So actually, um, yeah, I haven't heard of many use cases where um, you know a client is using like a master agent and using it to serve various different use cases across the organization. So that's actually an interesting point. Um, but I do know that I. Uh, there are a number of clients that I work with that have separate use cases across the board, right? As you mentioned, there's one on the front of the web page for lead generation. There's a customer support bot on their help page. And then they have maybe various different bots on separate landing pages. And so the way that they've integrated with Dashbot, first off, they've integrated every instance for every separate use case, um, you know, as it's essentially its own instance. So um, its own broken out data set. They have a customer service bot. They have a lead generation bot. They have a sales bot. And th that's all broken out into separate data sets. But in addition to that, uh, what they do is they'll generate another API key from Dashbot and they'll call it their like conversational pain all. 
And this is where they aggregate all the data from all the different chatbots all into one data set into Dashbot. So essentially, every time a bot sends a message or in or out, it'll send a copy, one copy to its, you know, its own instance in Dashbot. So customer service bot in the Dashbot, but it'll also send another copy to their aggregate bot. So the conversational pane all. So now they have a data set that has all their data and they can look through this entire data set to understand, you know, like pick out what are interesting business insights, what are people asking for? And then they have the data set that's really catered for the specific use case where that bot belongs. And so having both sides of this um, is, is really powerful, especially for, you know, like an enterprise company and this also opens up doors for them where they can export data out from their conversational pane all chatbot, be able to capture that complete data set and then run different uh, data science kind of experiments on that data to be able to pick out and learn from their, from their user base. Mm. Yeah, because I, I see a lot of, I mean, there's intents that would overlap from one department to another, and then there's probably some unique intents that just that department is probably better off handling. So it's interesting to hear your perspective on that. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's a lot to Dashbot, and, and there's uh, um, there's a lot to chat analytics. It's just such an important piece. Um, I, I kind of want to... We've been talking quite a bit here. Is there anybody else that has any questions or want to see anything specific on Dashbot that we can kind of ask Henry? You know, I'm, if there are no specific questions, um, I think one section that might be interesting for everyone here, um, other than the NLP optimization, is is the behavior section, and so. Um, this is another section of reports that it pretty much is, da is dashboard like bread and butter other, other than the NLP optimization. And the goal of the, all the reports in this section here is to understand user journeys as well as capture user conversions. And so I'll try to provide two really quick examples here. And so the first way of looking at all your conversational flows from a bird's eye view is through our tool called our conversation paths. And so this is the path report that shows your user journey based off the intent that, are, that, they're, that they're sending in. And so on this example here, these are the first intents that are being sent in from the bot. And then by clicking on any of these nodes, you can start to identify what are your most common user flows. And obviously this bot looks like it's doing a really poor job because it's just hitting not handled as its most common flow. Uh, let me switch over back to my movie bot here so I can actually provide some more valuable data. Uh, but the idea here, again, you're identifying your most common flows. Um, you're also seeing if your users are actually progressing down the flow that you intended and you designed for them. And then at every single stage, where are they dropping off? So starting to identify where, the, where what's the stage where a user is having trouble or they might be getting confused and then leaving the experience at that point. So again, this is the most kind of bird's eye view of all your user flows. If you do, do want to get more granular and you want to understand conversions for a specific flow, we do have a tool that allows you to create specific stages based off of intents or messages as your users make it through each stage. So a common flow for this bot would be how many people request a movie, provide the location, pick how many tickets they want, and eventually purchase a ticket. But the report that I really want to focus on is what we call our goals report. And so this one is one of the most beneficial reports because um, it's essentially flipping the funnel upside down. We're starting at the very, very end step of the funnel. For, so for the users that have actually hit that conversion step and then helping you backtrack and understand what are the most common or popular types of user journeys that lead the user to eventually converting. And when I say converting, it can be anything from like a purchase to capturing the lead, or it can be something like escalation. And you want to understand what are the top use cases that are leading a user to escalate. So the example that I'll use for this report is going to be with escalation, as it's actually the number one KPI for all customer service related chatbots. And so the way that we're capturing escalation within the goals report is by tracking how many people have actually seen the speak to agent intent, which is our escalation intent. And as you can see here, 
we have 1900 engaged users in the past week 900 of those users have escalated and so the typical follow-up question from here is for the 900 users that did escalate what were the reasons why they escalated and so by jumping into the PADS report here we are now using use surface and filter for all the most popular intent pads that end up with the user hitting that speak to agent intent. So by combing through this report, you can now start to identify which of your use cases lead to the highest levels of escalation. And then that might notify you to actually maybe fix the content or make that flow a little bit better, or maybe even to escalate them earlier so that they actually have a better user experience. And next time, I mean, anytime you do find an intent path that looks interesting, you want to dig into it further, you can click on the human button here, and this will actually pull up all the transcripts that follow this exact intent path that you see up here. And so now by going into the transcript, you're able to see the utterances, how the bot responds, and really get the full context of the conversation um, to understand. Click, click, yeah, is it possible to click even further into it? Like, what happens if you click that? Uh... Um, on one um, of the rows. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me change the tab sharing. Yeah, so clicking on one of those tabs right there, um, it essentially brings you into one of the transcripts that follows that exact intent path. And so again, the intent path here is time supplied. They go through the ticket count and they get to the final confirmation. And it looks like they're hitting a not handled response when they're asked the NPS question. And so um, actually, sorry, I wasn't sharing this tab. Um, this is the intent path that we're looking to follow. So again, um, go, going through the ticket confirmation, purchasing the ticket, and then getting to the NPS question for hitting the not handled, and then escalating at that point. And so if we come back into the actual transcript itself, um, you can see that it follows the exact path. So time supplied, how did the route respond? They go through the process and they actually end up purchasing the ticket. Um, and then from here, they're getting to ask the, the NPS question. They say, thank you, which is not an intended response. And then it's hitting the not handled. So they're actually escalating from this point on. And so this is not probably not going to happen in a real production scenario. This is uh, some dummy data. Uh, but you can you can understand the use case here, where the idea here for the goal tab um, is to prevent you from having to comb through every single transcript, but to actually help you surface the ones where the intent paths actually look interesting, where a user looks like they go off track or they look like they run into some trouble and have to escalate, and then allow you to surface those exact transcripts from that point on. Mm. Wow, that's a powerful tool. Makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And yeah, one last note to add. Um, so it the example that I showed you is with escalation, uh, but as you can imagine, you can create a goal for any intent that's essentially interesting to you, right? Um, it could be like a sign-up intent, it could be a purchase intent, and when you're coming in to create a goal, you can name that, you can create a custom type, so for users that achieved this goal and saw this intent, what are these users called versus the ones that never saw it? And then for the rule, you can actually add in multiple different intents. So if you have, let's say, multiple purchase intents, you can actually include them all into here and attract this as a goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess another good example would be like a feedback. So if they got to a section where you maybe had a feedback intent and they filled out, mm -hmm. maybe, it's, maybe it's conversational, maybe it's through, maybe they're using like a, a web view on bot copy or something like that but yeah if, if you're i mean feedback's pretty important for the whole entire experience so it might be a exactly so good. i can imagine if there is a feedback question where you're asking the user like you know thumbs up thumbs down was it helpful you'd create a goal for maybe the thumbs down response and then mm -hmm. that will allow you to really easily locate all the different use cases that led to a negative review and then be able to understand you know what did the user come in exactly looking for and why did the bot fail at you know satisfying what the user uh, what the user was asking? Mm. Yeah, that's an, that's really important. And and, is, and on the escalation side, having these goals go to the escalation, you're going to get a quick count on of the conversations, how many went to human. A, a lot of people are designing these chatbots not to necessarily replace, but kind of. Um, automate some of these repetitive tasks. So being able to quickly look at 
how many calls went to human and then also how the length and duration of those calls compared to what it was prior to the chatbot. That's important information for everyone. Mm -hmm. to have. Exactly. Exactly. Is there, is there any other tabs or it looks like we've, we've covered a lot and there's no need to, if, if no one has it, we can open it back up for questions. Yeah. Hey, you have a question? Yeah. Uh, Henry, this is awesome uh, product. I, I've seen it on the web and it's cool to see it in action. Awesome. Uh, I like how uh, when you went to the tabs, not only could you view the data, but you were able to apply it, like you said, uh, or you showed how you could uh, uh, add training phrases. Um, when it comes to a lot of the data, how can designers and, and other team members share share the data with other people? Like, uh, can a lot of these tables be exported as an Excel spreadsheet, um, then to be you know applied to pie charts and other more visual um, ways to show this data? Yes. So um, if you are looking to share within your organization and your own team members, uh, we do have a con we have, do have like a concept of like multi user access with different varying roles and permissions. And so you can share this. Um, everyone on your team can have access into Dashbot yourself. Um, otherwise, let's say if you're putting together other reports and you want to create visualized reports for, let's say, management or leadership or a particular client. Um, we do have uh, the ability to export any of these any of these reports out. And the way we can export, I'll show you an example here. I could just jump into the intents report here. These are the top intents that are being sent into your bot. At the bottom of every report, we do have an export to CSV button. This will pull this out into essentially an Excel sheet that you can use to create pie charts and anything of that sort. Um, otherwise, if there is a requirement where you need the data in a different format, for example, you know, in an actual Excel format or in, let's say, your transcripts in full JSON format, we can provide that as a custom data export. So that can be set up to actually send to you on a scheduled basis um, right. with the exact reports that you're looking for. Cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. That's a good question, Austin. Uh, does anybody else have have any questions? We kind of we covered a lot here, Henry. I appreciate it. It's good. Yeah, it's good. no problem. Yeah, the platform is quite dense, so you know, like I, I want to say, I only walked through maybe fifty percent of of the of the of the reports today. Um, but you know, as you spend more time inside of Dashbot, um, yeah, there there's there's quite a lot of tools in here that can actually serve and answer a lot of different questions that people have. Hmm. Uh, and for people who are just getting started with Dashbot, um, um, majority of the tutorials like on YouTube, uh, where? Yeah, so we actually have like a full onboarding process. And so the way that we typically try to get customers through the door is we do have a free version that you can sign up for and integrate and just start sending data. Um, there are a, a handful of reports that work right out of the box on the free version, such as the ability to see some of the transcripts. Um, you are able to see all of your intent reports like you're seeing here, as well as the, uh, the message reports. And so these work right out of the box. And so the idea here is once you start actually sending some data in and you have an idea around what are the types of metrics, that or the KPIs that you want to capture, um, I'll actually be able to hop on a call with you and join your team, provide a walkthrough of the of the platform using your own data, and then from there activating some of the paid features that we think will actually fit your use case and the KPIs you're looking to track. And then after about a, like a two week period of the trial period, um, if the tools and the features seem like a good fit for you, um, we'd get you fully onboarded from there. And again, uh, we do uh, we do quite a lot with the whole onboarding uh, process. So we ensure that you and your team know exactly how to use the tool to the best of your ability um, before we you make sure that you're comfortable with actually onboarding with the license. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I don't want to take up any unnecessary time. If no one has any other questions, we can kind of we can call this one early. Henry, it's you, you did an amazing job. There's a lot to go through there and you did great. Yeah, no, I really appreciate all of you all of you taking the time. Yeah. And yeah, yeah if there's 
you know, if there are any questions or if you'd like to sign up for Dashbot, integrate your bot and have me take a look at your data and maybe provide suggestions on best practices or what can be improved, you know, like feel free to reach out. Um, yeah, my email is just henry at dashbot.io and uh, Dustin, I really appreciate you inviting me and, you know, I'm glad to be able to speak to some of your clients and educate yeah, them about the importance of analytics. Yeah, beautiful. Well, you guys heard it. His, his email is pretty simple, just henry at dashbot.io. Mm -hmm. uh, just a few quick bot copy announcements. We're, the next session will be around, we've got several features coming out on bot copies 2.0, which will be in the next couple of weeks. Um, so we're going to be working with people on showing and demoing those. Um, I'll send, I'll update that on our website soon. Um, otherwise, you guys know all know where to reach us if you have any questions. And uh, appreciate the time. Thank you. Great, thank yeah. you guys.